Hey everyone, it's me, the Otaku Fagger here, and today we're going to have a discussion of the upcoming gacha game, Wuthering Waves. This is not sponsored, so I get to say whatever the fuck I want. Before we begin, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, takes you five seconds, costs you nothing. Thank you very much. When Wuthering Waves was first announced back... I don't even know how long ago it was, I'm gonna be real with you. But when it was first announced on Twitter, me and some other friends collectively were like, wow, this actually looks impressive. I'm actually kind of excited. And I was. I'm not anymore. And why is that, you might ask? From what I've seen of everything the game has to offer, at least from every beta stream that I've ever watched from certain streamers, I just don't have an interest in the game. As for when I first saw the Twitter exist to come into existence and then the first promotional video was put out I was like wow this actually looks pretty intriguing and now I'm just kind of like I really don't care and here's the thing this game isn't dead on arrival far from it in fact it's going to do fantastic and then it's gonna fall off and why is it going to fall off? Well, let me tell you why. Because Genshin Impact exists. Because Hoyoverse exists. And I, a day one Genshin Impact player, would love to see the game have some competition. And here's Wuwa coming straight out the gate. Horses running blazing trail and ready to compete with Hoyoverse. And I'm excited. I think it's going to fall under the category of a gacha game that is going to have a very big fan base, yes. but. Will it be as big as Genshin's? Technically, no. And here's why. Because Genshin is four years strong. Almost five. And Wuwa's just starting. And Wuwa, from what I've seen of everything of this game, it definitely looks like a game that lives and dies on its content creators. Especially ones that get sponsored. I'm gonna tell you this. A few months from now, this month of May and the next month of June, Oh, it's gonna be Wuwa, Wuwa, Wuwa. Genshin, what's that? I don't know. We're gonna hit Natlin in Genshin. And everything's gonna go back to Genshin. Everybody's gonna go back to Genshin. Everyone's gonna start signing their whole universe contracts again. All of that shit. And I've never gotten one of those, clearly, because I'm such a small content creator. But even if I did get one, would I sign it? Who knows? Wuwa is going to have its time. It's, it's in a perfect spot. They're releasing it in a perfect time frame. When Genshin is dead in the dark. And I love Genshin Impact, mind you. I love this game. It's one of my favorite gacha games, along with Fate Grand Order, Honkai Star Rail, and others. But I will not be playing Wuwa, because for me, that game doesn't have anything interesting in it for me to play. And is that because I like Hoyoverse games? No, that's not it at all. There's several gacha games out there I won't play because I just don't have an interest in it. Apparently, Solo Leveling Arise is a gacha game, and I don't give a fuck about that either. Nikkei's a gacha game, and I don't give a fuck about that either. Are the characters hot as shit? Yeah, but I'm not gonna play it. I don't care. And you know why I don't? don't care and you know why Wuwa won't have a strong enough fan base as Genshin? The story. The story, from what I remember in the betas, was bad. Really bad. It's one of those things that nobody gives a fuck about because it's not good. Wuwa is going to be like the Dark Souls of Genshin Impact players. It's, you go to this game for the gameplay and not the story. Which is completely fine, by the way. That's completely fine. I don't care. You can do that. If you want a hardcore experience, go to Wuwa. That's completely fine. But here's the thing. That's gonna create a big niche for the game. Huge niche. And if you want to fit into that niche, great. Good for you. Have fun. I'm personally not gonna fit into that niche because I don't really care about that. When I play a gacha game, do you know why I play gacha games? The attractive characters? and the story. I don't give a fuck about gameplay. And honestly, a lot of other people don't either because gacha games aren't really for gameplay. The gameplay of a gacha game is spending money to get the attractive character you want and then running around and doing stuff with that character if you're in Genshin or Honkai Star Rail or if you're in Fate Grand Order, you know, looking at the profile and looking at the character and be like, cool, and then you take him into the, you know, the weekly missions. They're like, cool, I did my dailies, bounce out. Gotcha games were designed also to be played for a short burst of time, not for long periods of time every day. That is something that a lot of people forget. And I just feel like with Wuwa, it's gonna start off hype, everyone's gonna love it, and come six months down the line, or even when Natlin releases, the only time they will play it is when they're sponsored, these bigger streamers. Unless you're tech tone, then you're gonna play it all the time, and eventually, there will be drama in that community, and eventually, he will farm it, and hey, good on you, buddy, farm all the drama you want, Pog. Hey, man, I'm getting a little drama, too, from my Ito and Paimon reaction video of them singing, and honestly, <laughs> It's pretty funny, I'll be real. It's like Tectone 2.0, but 
with Paimon this time instead of Yunjin and Fire Truck. But anyway, back to Wuthering Waves. The game itself just doesn't have anything for me to want to play it, and that is, I think, okay to say. If I want it to get more viewers and get more shit, I would dick ride the fuck out of that game. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to subject myself to what a lot of other Genshin Impact CCs do. If I don't care about the game, I'm not gonna play it. So if anyone's gonna ask me, Why aren't you playing Wuthering Waves? Why aren't you playing Wuthering Waves? Fucking play it! No. Now maybe there's a chance that I watch someone like Tectone play it, because I'm gonna watch him play it when it comes out. And maybe there'll be something intriguing that actually makes me want to play it. But as of things stand now, I do not give a fuck about Wuthering Waves. And will I give a fuck about Wuthering Waves in the future? Probably not. I am very curious to see what is going to happen when we get to Genshin 5.0 when Natlin is coming out because that's when that game's gonna hit its peak again and that is Wuthering Wave's biggest competition time right then and there that is what decides what's gonna happen with Genshin and Wuthering Waves who will be loyal to which game who will be loyal to the companies and who will drop one of them for the other and then they're gonna come back to the other one that they dropped because money. So I'm very curious about how Wuthering Waves is going to perform from content creators because we know people like Gold are gonna play it because he's going to get sponsored. Because if you get a sponsorship as someone from big as Asmongold, then of course your game is gonna get a lot of viewership and get a lot of people playing. The company for Wuthering Waves they did Punishing Green Raven, and the advertisement of the game sucks ass, but apparently they've learned how to advertise. So I'm just really curious to see what Hoyoverse does with all of this happening, because if Natlin is not a success, it's not a good look. Now, is Genshin Impact going to die because of Weathering Waves? No. And is Weathering Waves going to die because of Genshin Impact? No. They're going to be very two different communities. One is a story-based driven game with a little bit of chess hunting here and there, and you go kill some hilly trolls and pick some mint. Fucking mint pickers. And the other looks like it's going to be a less about the story and more about the gameplay aspect of the game. Now, they did say that apparently they rewrote the whole story, or at least most of it. So maybe the story's actually good now. Just from what I remember, it didn't seem all that intriguing. A lot of these times with gacha games, the reason people play them is for the story. Why did people get into Fate Grand Order? Well, first, because it's a big franchise. It, it's a spin-off of a huge franchise, a visual novel and an anime franchise. And sure, those first few chapters sucked fucking ass until you got to Camelot and then Babylonia, but people trusted in that, oh, maybe the story would get better, and it did. The same thing with Genshin Impact. Those first few story arcs were decent. They were fine for what the game was giving us. It was a new game of the genre, you know, a new open world gotcha game, you know, and the story finally hit its stride when we reached Sumeru. Heck, I would even say that Leeway story is pretty good, to be honest. We get to Sumeru and the story, woo, and then we get to Fontaine, woo! When we get to Natlin, I spent woo! But then again, there is other gotcha games like Nike. Who the fuck plays that for the story? Am I right, fellas? Like, hello, we're just looking at characters' fat asses on the screen. Weathering Waves is in an interesting state, and I'm very curious to see where it goes from here. And hey, for the people who want it to be successful and be more successful than Genshin Impact, that's fine with me. I'm gonna be over here playing my game and you go enjoy your game. Win-win for us both. And hey, one less gotcha game I have to play means less strain on my wallet. So honestly, I'm okay with that. So what do you guys think is gonna happen with Genshin Impact, Hoyoverse, Wuthering Waves, and all that stuff? Leave it down in the comments down below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!